No, no, when you come to Christ, we come with all of our brokenness. But somehow, in the goodness of God, He has this ability to take our lives, which are really nothing, and He turns it into something. He takes the ordinary and turns it into the extraordinary. I love this. That's the Jesus that I serve. And you read this story, you're like, that's cool, man. I, I like this. I like this Peter guy, but, but we have to remember this is the same Peter. Who just a few chapters earlier, when Jesus is about to be crucified, St. Peter, who's standing around a fire trying to warm himself, and a little girl looks at him and says, aren't you one of, you're one of his homies, you're one of his cronies, his minions, you're one of his followers. And what, is, what does Peter do? He's like, hold up a minute, don't know who you're talking about, this is my paraphrase version. Not sure who you're talking about. No, I don't know Jesus. Oh, yeah, I've heard about him. I've seen the guy, but I'm not one of his friends. I'm not one of his followers. Three times Peter retreats out of fear. Three times he denies knowing Jesus. But now we find him in this context where it's very hostile. It's very unfriendly. The Sanhedrin had the ability and the power to make their life very difficult. But Peter does something. He stands there boldly and he articulates the message of Christ and it got me thinking about my message for you because if you're wondering what the title of my message is tonight, it's, it's called this, Under the Influence. That Peter, in Acts chapter 4, is operating under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And when you operate under the influence of the Holy Spirit, something about our lives changes. A whole lot of things about our lives start to change. I mean, can I just take this into the natural context? Uh, you, know, you don't have to put your hand up, but I, I came from a pretty checkered background, a pretty sketchy background, but you just have to go to a bar or a club. Come on now. Two o'clock in the morning. When somebody has got too much alcohol in their system, anyone seen this before? Anyone done this before? You're like, mm -mm. Mm. Well, let me just tell you, I have. I, I, I did. I was, before I met Christ. I mean, you ever seen this before where somebody's got too much alcohol? Or too much substance or whatever drug it may, may be. Have you, you, know, you know, nobody has to walk down Cavill Avenue, which is in Surface Paradise, at 2 o'clock in the morning, on Saturday morning. And, and nobody has to tell you and I when you see a, a young lady who's carrying her shoes, her high heels. You know, you know how you, you just have to look as you drive past. You know when a lady's had a big night because the shoes are in her fingers and she's barefoot but it's freezing cold and she's stumbling along the road. Nobody has to tell you and I that they're under the influence. Does that make sense? We all know that they're under the influence of something, alcohol, whatever it may be. Why? Because when somebody is under the influence of alcohol or a drug, whatever that may be, it changes everything about their life. It changes the way they walk. Seen somebody drunk before. They, they can't walk straight. When somebody's under the influence of alcohol, it changes the way they speak. It changes the way they live. Everything about their life, like everything, changes. Because they're under the influence of a substance that is altering their behavior. Now, let me take it back to the Spirit of God. When you and I are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, He changes the way that we walk. Come on now. He changes the way that we talk. He changes the way that we live. Our lives are on this perpetual process of change. And I'm not sure about you, if you're a Christian here tonight and you know Jesus Christ. I want to be somebody, like just a person, let alone a pastor, let alone a preacher of the gospel. I want to be just a person who will live under the influence of the Holy Spirit at deeper levels in my life. Why? Because I need His presence. I need His presence to fill me daily, regularly. Because in the world, there is a different spirit. Amen. Amen. Let me just give you a few things. By the way, I forgot to ask what time I need to finish. Uh, 9.30. 9.30. Somebody said 10 o'clock. The boss said 9.30. Do I have any other takers over here? Anyone else? Anyone? Let's, well, is, there, is there a game on tonight or something? Uh, Go to the blues. Yeah. No, no people going for the blues here. I know I'll be queasy. Is there any people that go for the mighty blues? Oh, well, you know what? Uh, who cares? Who really doesn't care about the game anyway? You know? I mean, I'm going to get through this when we get to the game, people. Come on, settle down. 
by the way, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Um, Pastor Paul and Janine, it's <laughs> he's like, have you finished? No, not yet. But I, I want to thank you. It's a privilege. You know, I never, I never take this stuff for granted. I was saying earlier to Janine before I, before we came in today, and I never take this thing for anywhere I preach. It's a deep privilege for me. And thank you for extending me the grace, and thank you for all your faithfulness. Twenty-five years, I think you've had this church yet. Yeah? I was here before you had your twentieth. You didn't even invite me back in full. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> But 25 years is amazing. You see, our little church, we've been here six years, September this year. We've got a long way to go. 25 years. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, we can give them a hand. Just touching on the whole dinosaur thing, if I was around when the dinosaurs were around, I'm just wondering when you were around. He was there at the Big Bang. Oh, do you ascribe to the Big Bang Theory? (laughs) Wow, this is going to get real messy real quick. Just so you know, know, (laughs) back to the Bible, Daniel, back to the Bible. Holy Spirit, come back here. (laughs) So I just want to give you a few things that I'm going to pray. Is that all right? Just pray for some people and believe for the Holy Spirit to to do his thing, to change us on the inside. I'm talking about being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And here's the first thing for you and I tonight. When we are under his influence, being under his influence, the influence of the Holy Spirit produces boldness and courage. When we are under his influence, this will produce boldness and courage in our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, and this courage in our lives to live like, like loud with the gospel of grace that we have been given, and if we just go back to the bar or the club for a moment, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but I definitely have. I've seen a guy who has like got way too much alcohol in him, and he's like four foot nothing. But he looks across the bar, across the club, and he looks at a guy who's like six foot eight. He's built like a brick house. And the little four foot guy who's got too much alcohol in his system will look across the room and picks a fight. When a guy who's six foot eight, built like a brick house, whose booker alone could knock this guy out. But he'll walk across the room and look up at this, I've seen this. And he's like, what are you looking at, mate? And you're like, hey bro, you might, you might want to calm down, dude. This is not going to end well for you. You see, when somebody's under the influence of a, of a drug or an alcohol, they have this unusual boldness, this courage. You see, when you translate that to the Holy Spirit, We have this boldness and this courage to live in a world that doesn't necessarily want to hear about the goodness of God. In a world that I'm sure most of you in here have to go back to your uh, workplace or maybe the school holidays on now. You know, high school, university. You go back to an environment that can often be very godless. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? There's a different spirit there. And too many times I find Christians, we, we're in our workplaces, we're doing our thing in our universities and our schools, but we're, we're timid. Come on now. We, we leave the church and we leave the conference. If you go to a conference or leave a camp and we're inspired while we're there, and we're, we're confident, we're full of the Spirit of God, but then we walk into our Monday, our Tuesday, our Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and somehow what was taking place in that meeting, somehow when we get out into the world, it, things can change. But can I tell you, when we live under the influence of the Holy Spirit, He gives us this boldness. Like Peter was that day when he stood there and articulated boldly to these men who could make his life hell. He did not back down. He did not retreat. And I want to live as a Christian who's not bold like standing here right now to tell you about Jesus. But when I get out of the four walls of this auditorium I'm I'm all of a sudden timid and I'm afraid what people may think. No, I don't want to live as a Christian like that. I want to live under the influence of the Holy Spirit where it is a world that craves to know that Jesus that I know. Come on now. This is the gospel of Jesus. And so I think when we learn to live under the influence of the Holy Spirit at deeper levels, we, we live with this boldness and this courage. Yeah. Well, don't, don't, feel con- don't take this from a condemning spirit or attitude. But I find in my travels around the world when I get the privilege to talk to people and dialogue with them and you know, how, what do you do for work? And you find out, you might ask a question and, you know, hey, when's the last time you shared your faith? It's amazing how many Christians we, we, we just say, well, I can't remember. I'm not sure. We have the greatest message on planet Earth. 
It's called the message of Jesus Christ, the lover of people's souls. And somehow we live intimidated by the world. And I know in my own life, the more I've placed my heart and my spirit and my mind under his influence, he's produced this boldness in my life to do things that are not normal, to do things that are unusual, to do things that, that I normally wouldn't do. But because I'm under his influence, he changes me. He does this thing inside of me, creates this boldness and this courage to do things that are impossible without the grace of God. Amen? Amen. That's my first thing. Second thing for you is this. When you're under his influence... You will see others very, very differently. When you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you start to see other people very differently. You can't look at them in the same eyes. You can't see people the same way with our natural eyesight. We start to see the, the goal that God has placed on the inside of them. We start to see the gift of God that is on the inside of their heart. As a matter of fact, I've got two amazing gentlemen sitting right here. Here, you look, you might be so happy about this. And these guys go to our church, and our little old church over across the road there. And, and uh, man, you look at the gift. You don't know them, but man, these guys are gifted. They're talented. As a matter of fact, they're single, and they're ready to mingle. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, look at them, man. They're built like me. Not really, not really. Oh, yeah, they got more muscle than me. But man, I look at these, I see the gold and the talent and the gift and the grace on their life. But you know, sometimes, can I be honest, in the church, we can look at others and we can just see that we can just judge. We can look at the negative before we see the gold in people's lives. We can see, oh, look at that person. How annoying are they? So we don't do that. Sit up. We all do this. Come on now, in the church, this is what happens. We look at each other and we can get frustrated by people. We don't like that. And they're annoying and look what they do. And Pastor so and so. But when you live under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you start to see others very differently. You see the gift of God on their life. You see the grace of God in their life. You see the, 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 the goodness and the gold that's on the inside of people's lives. And I want to live as a Christian that will come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you think about Saul for a minute. Before he became Paul, Saul was a hater of the church. He was a man who was on a mission. Thought he was on the right mission. He was just really, really messed up. He was like hell-bent on destroying the disciples. The church has this encounter on the road to Damascus. And, and he literally meets Jesus. And the Lord asks him, hey, hey, dude, like, why are you persecuting me? And God closes his eyes for a few days. And from that point forward, if you realize that this guy here has had an encounter with Jesus... He's had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and the way that he sees everything about his life has changed from that day forward. And he starts to see the way that God wanted him to see, which is that the church and the people that he's persecuting and God himself is the one that he's meant to serve and yield his life to forever. And he becomes one of the greatest men of God to ever live on planet Earth. You see, when you live under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you start to see others very differently. You look across to the right or to the left and look around and just see this amazing gift. Oh, I want to live like this. But I can't live like this without being under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because if my own natural mind kicks in. Does anyone know? I'm just being honest with you. Some people think pastors are all holy. You know, I'll just, I am a pastor, but I'll be honest. With you. Sometimes I can use my own sight. And I'm not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I just start to judge people. Come on now, that's not our call as Christians. To look around and judge our brother and sister. What about looking at the grace of their life? Do you know, does anyone know what I'm saying? I want to live like that. I want to be a part of a church that's going to see others the way that God sees them. And to do that, I've got to live, live under his influence. The third thing is this. Being under his influence will deplete fear in our lives. The first one was being under his influence will produce boldness and courage in our lives. Being under his influence, we start to see others differently. Third, being under his influence will deplete fear in our life. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love. A perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in, in love. When you're under his influence, fear no longer has a place in your heart. Fear is a very paralyzing thing. A lot of people in the church around the globe... They can be gripped by fear, all types of fears. As a matter of fact, if you jump on Google, Dr. Google, not much that a good old Google doesn't know, but type in Google, fears, and you will find hundreds, if not thousands, of diagnosed fears, 
phobias. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like thousands of them. I mean, I've read several of them. Obviously, the, maybe the more popular ones, arachnophobia, which is a fear of spiders. Anyone have a fear of spiders in here? Um, just trying to think of some out. What's the height one? Scared, scared of heights? There's, I mean, there's thousands. One of them I read the other day was a, a fear of clowns. Mmm. <laughs> It's, it's a literally diagnosed fear where people see a clown like, ah! <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Sorry, Lexi, that's not funny if you do have a fear of clowns. My bad. 